What's up YouTube? Um, Oliver here and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a function that swaps two areas of memory. Alright, let's start it with the uh, easy version of that and the ver easy version of that is to swap uh, two of the smallest quantums of memory in uh, everyday programming which is the byte and one byte is eight bits which is eight zeros and ones and a data type in C that is one byte long is the character. So first what we want to do is create a function that swaps two characters. So it's going to start like this. And it's going to take two addresses. All right. Now what it's going to do to these two addresses is that it's going to use some uh, tricky math, tricky uh, little addition to kind of like swap these two values around and I'm going to go ahead and write that and I'll explain it as I go. So I'm going to set C1 equal to C1 plus C2 and what this does is that it stores the sum of these two numbers inside C1 which means that it's kind of like compressing uh, two kind of two bytes of information into one byte uh, using some tricky math so the next step is gonna be C2 is equal to star C1 minus star C2 so what this does is that it takes the sum of of the two numbers which I stored in the first step and I subtract C2 from that so now C2 has the value of C1 and with that the last step so now the last step I extract the value of C2 by subtracting what was what is now C1 from the sum of the two numbers. So now this function should effectively swap them um, without any error. So let's try to uh, test this function out. Alright, to test this function, I'm going to use the printf. Alright, now with printf, what I want to do is I want to first define two characters. So I'm going to set that to a hard bar equals to b. Now, if I use the swap C function on these two, foo should equal to B and bar should be equal to A. So let's try that. So I'm going to give it the address of foo and the address of bar. Now what you want to do also is to um, output the values of foo and bar before so you can actually see the change. Print f. I'm gonna do uh, percent c backslash n percent c backslash n backslash n. That should be good. And then I'm gonna put the values of foo and bar in there. Okay, so now after we've swapped it, we want to print it again and see if it's any different. And it should show different values. Let's try. And of course, I forgot to put the get char because get char blocks the IO so we can actually see the output. Okay, so foo is equal to A, bar is equal to B initially. After you do the swap, foo is now equal to B and bar is now equal to A. So this function pretty much works. I mean, it's not that hard, right? Simple math simple output, simple definitions. Now, the tricky part is doing a swap for any other data type. Let's say if you want to swap to integers, if you want to swap to uh, to shorts, if you want to swap uh, long longs, if you want to swap like um, data structures. And that's actually, if you think about it, hmm, if a character is the smallest quantum of a memory, um, then doesn't that mean other types of memory are all made up of a bunch of characters? And if you think that, then you would be right, because that's 
basically how we're going to implement the swap generic function. So void swap generic. It's going to take the same parameters, c1 and c2, but then it's also going to take a size parameter. My bad, it's in size. Okay. And what this means is that it can basically swap any kind of memory because you tell it how much size the memory is and it'll swap that memory for you, swap that information for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a while loop while there's still size left in the buffer. You want to swap C. car star c1 and car star c2 and I fucked up I was, I was just thinking oh that doesn't look right okay so I'm gonna swap these two but then at the end of this you're going to increment them c1 plus plus c2 plus plus so what this is going to do, it's going to keep swapping C1 and C2, and C1 and C2 are going to move along and change positions, and then they're going to swap each individual byte back and forth until the entire data structure is swapped over. So how, would it, how do we use this function? So let's let's change these foo and bar values up. I'm going to change this one into an integer, this one into an integer, and then I'm going to set foo equal to, uh, let's do 1337, let's change bar into 6969. Okay, good enough numbers. Change the output type into D. And what this does, swap. Ugh, not bad. Car star ampersand C. And this is how you use the function. You do a swap C. Uh, you do a swap generic. I mean, since now that's our new function that we're going to work with. You call swap generic on two areas of memory, two addresses that you want to swap, and then you cast them to character pointers first, but then you also pass in the size of whatever you want to swap. And we're swapping int here, so I'm passing size of int. And then this should swap these two numbers without any uh, trouble. There is trouble. And that is because I did not define swap C before I defined swap generic. So the compiler doesn't know where to look for that function. But now everything should be nice and swell. And if we run that, as you can see, I have swapped to um, these two values. And 1337 is now stored in bar. And 6969 is now stored in foo. It's pretty easy, right? And you can extend this to structures, to long longs, to even to strings. All you have to do is pass in the length of the string here, and it'll swap two strings for you. And that's basically it for this tutorial. I mean, it's not very hard, right? Uh, I just wanted to share that with you because I thought, like, I personally thought this this was kind of interesting just to see how internal memory works in the computer and how everything is stored in the smallest quantum of data. You can cast these into anything you want you can change that you can interpret integers as um as characters that's why that's why data typing is so important that's why i love statically typed languages and that's why i hate javascript but uh, enough of the rant if you like this video please like the video please subscribe to my channel i mean i'm gonna come up with more videos about programming about games about art about like anything in general so stay tuned for that